my name is Lynn Richards Neuer. I am 50 years old and I was born in uh, Wonju in South Korea and was adopted when I was about nine years old. Um, I grew up out in Long Island in Nassau County in South Merrick, right next to Jones Beach. I am adopted into a German Jewish uh, English family. I have two brothers who are biologically from my parents, and my oldest sister, who is about a year older than me, is adopted also. She's part Filipino, part Dutch. Um, she was adopted when she was about two hours old. Never dawned about thinking of finding birth families. Um, I was pretty happy about um, the way I was and not knowing about my family or the history, um, but it was recently when I had given birth to my first child, which was a son, and I was like, oh, I'm kind of curious of what it was like. And then when I had my daughter 18 months later, that's when I had the biggest urge because all I looked at was my daughter saying, I am doing exactly as what my birth mother. Here I am having a child, and then the idea of relinquishing that child just started eating, me, eating away on me. So that's when I started. I found them in 2008. Um, I actually got it through an application that Joy had told me about, one of my girlfriends. You know what, I didn't really expect anything. They had no birth records, no paper records. Um, everything was covered up. And it was through goal. It was like those motherland tours, and it was uh, about 40 of us. It was basically news media, outlets, papers, birth search, all that type of stuff. And that was what the whole tour was about. It wasn't showing you Korea and the temples or food or anything. It was you are going to be vulnerable in doing all of these interviews every day and night, tests for DNA and all that kind of stuff. And they picked about five of us who didn't have any records um, to go on TV. And of course we went to our agencies also and of, I did find only an additional picture of supposedly a baby picture of me, which was seven or eight years old. That was considered my baby picture. But we were on TV, the five of us, and um, what I later heard from the media, from the news station, was that someone called and said that that child looks like someone that they knew. So the baby picture I had from the orphanage was what they saw, a resemblance. And then since then, before I left, I went to Seoul Hospital to do more blood and DNA. And they had asked me to stay an additional week or two, but I had already my daughter who was like about six or seven months, and I was like, I had to go back. I actually got the news during Christmas, Hanukkah week, and um, someone called me up at two in the morning, and I thought it was all a joke. I picked up the phone and I just, they said, we found your birth mother and I started hyperventilating. Dropped the phone and he came out and he's like, what's going on? And he saw me like going crazy on the floor and he's just like, okay, what? And he had the conversation. So they said within about, I think within like the 24 hours, 48 hours, they said they wanted to put me on Skype and meet my birth mother on TV right then and there. The minute she came out on TV, that was the, the biggest intense moment in my life because I was looking exactly at myself. And you know, the one thing I did hear from the television station and also her was that they wanted to dial her up and she's like, no, I want her to see the real me, it, that I have wrinkles, I have sags, or whatever it was. And it, she 
was amazing. She was beautiful, but it was really scary. I, I would say the whole intense moment was just fright because I never saw anyone that looked like me. And of course, my husband's like, okay, so I know what you're going to look like in like 20 or 30 years from now. So that was, I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah. There was a big thing about how we were going to meet because I, the television, KBS was like, we want to film everything. And I was like, no, that was not the agreement. I want to meet this woman, but it's on my terms. Um, I felt like when you find your birth family, you're opening a Pandora's box. You don't know what you're going to get into. You don't know what's going to happen, what your reaction was. And being um, a cynical New Yorker, you're just, you want to protect your family. You want to protect your husband. And I want to make sure that I don't get her. Because how you kind of say, she may look like me, but we don't know our DNA, blood. We just have to make sure, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's, that type of stuff. So it was, we had rented a hotel, um, and that's where we wanted to stay. We wanted our own private space because I felt like if I was going to go have a breakdown or have an emotional or reaction or whatever, I wanted it in my private space. I didn't want to be invaded by people I didn't know. Um, they might have been related by blood, but I, I didn't want. I wanted my space to be private. So if I was going to break down, I had family fr and a husband. I didn't have total strangers who wanted to know what was going on. It was just my husband and my, um, my kids. Translators, I think it was one or two that I knew from goal, or I had friends that were already in Korea who either found their birth family or wanted to live there for a year or two to study or whatnot. So, and what little, the basic versions of Korean that I knew, uh, I thought I could kind of, you know, I think we all spoke by body gesture, broken Korean and English <laughs> and uh, uh, that kind of stuff. And I think facial, uh, facial reactions, I think I probably went back to Korea at least three or four times after that. And, it, you know, no one paid for it. It was myself. So, you know, I made the effort to call on Skype or, you know, and I think the response I probably got it back was, why aren't you learning Korean? You know, that's not what you say. And um, after a while, I was like, you know what, I'm... I don't know you, and I know that sounds kind of mean to say, but I'm just like, I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. You may have given birth to me, but I don't know you. So you can't ask me so much from me, but when I don't even know anything, and you're not making that effort either. And I feel like it takes two to get to know each other. So um, we haven't talked, I guess, in the past two or three years. But, you know, we're on Facebook, but, and it's, I think, just recently, I have to say, I probably, about two months ago, I probably butt-dialed my birth mother. Um, I was slightly, <laughs> maybe a little tipsy, and it was probably one of that time where uh, there was a lot of things on Facebook where they were meeting birth families and birth searchers. And a couple of my friends were doing that, and they were asking my opinion and whatnot. And I think it was a little emotional because I remember what kind of roller coaster I went through. And um, I kind of butt dialed her and just said my basic version of like "pokoshi poyo," meaning "I miss you." Um, I think I just wanted to hear her voice. But afterwards, I was just like I rambled on in English and said, "You know, I really miss you. I do think of you." But um, I think she called back my birth sister and she was like, he called them on why? And I was just like, I just wanted to hear her voice. I think in my 20s, I kind of went through a phase. Um, I got married at a very young age. Um, I was in the 
restaurant industry and worked in a catering firm out in Long Island. We would hire a lot of private chefs in the city and they would come to do some caterings on the weekends. And I worked for my Hebrew teacher's son who owned a catering, kosher, non-kosher catering. And, um, you know, I've met a man and I think everything, everything always revolves around a guy, you know. I got into a relationship with him. There was a lot of physical abuse, verbal and mental. And I had, I can't believe I had even been in a relationship like that because I was taught so well that, you know, my parents were one of those like liberal hippies, throw the bra in the fire and, you know, never let a man do all these type of stuff. Um, but I think I had a lot of issues at the fact that I was trying to find who I was as an identity. We got married, there was more physical abuse, um, verbal and mental. We finally got a divorce, but my hand is always a reminder that I will never <laughs> have something like that ever happen to me again. Um, and I will always show to remind my children that as a daughter that she'll never have, I will hope that she never has that kind of issue. And um, as, a, as a son, that he will never do something like that. So um, I went through after a divorce, um, um, I went through a really uh, drinking binge, smoking, um, and if it wasn't for my girlfriends, Joy and Leanne and Holly, um, they went through a lot with me. Um, and I have to say, they were probably my, my emotional support, physically and mentally, for a whole year, or maybe longer, and my girlfriend, Marie. Um, when I finally found Holly, I was going into that stage, was like, who was I? What was I? Am I Korean? Am I American? Um, and that was probably when I finally got to the realization that I was going to like who I was. And, you know, you were always taught to be positive and life was going to be really simple and you weren't going to make a big production of it. Like, it wasn't like, realistically, I wasn't going to, life wasn't like a white picket fence, a knight in shining armor, things like that don't happen. With them, you know, they were, they were amazing. And, uh, and then finding my group, also known as, I think really planted my feet. And then I had started joining those um, Korean American network, the Kang groups. And that's how I actually met Holly. And then it was like, oh, you're adopted, and now you really know what I went through. And it was, I think that was the perfect connection, because I think that's when I figured out someone went through the same scenario as I did. The reality is that it's not a white picket fence, and there's no knight in shining armor or a princess or a prince. It's going to be hard growing up in general, whether if you're 10, even 15, or even in your 20s. Heck, it's not even, it's even <laughs> good even at, in your 30s. You're still trying to find yourself. But it takes time. And it's the one thing I have to say is I am so grateful of having my girlfriends. I think, and to have a community that you could talk to. My name is Lynn Richards-Noyer, and this is my Korean-American story. Mm -hmm.